June 28th, 1914. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife plunged Europe into a diplomatic crisis that turned into a war that engulfed the world. The assassination lit a powder keg that had lain beneath the network foundations of international relations for decades. But it didn't have to be this way. For all the festering tension, war was avoidable. In a crisis 1914, you and up to four other players are put in the shoes of high-profile diplomats tasked with trying to prevent World War I from happening. Players will face difficult decisions as they try to use their limited resources and cope with the ever-shortening time and growing tensions. I'm Axio729, and this is Crisis 1914. Players take on the roles of diplomats, playing against the game, which is constantly ramping up tension and bringing war closer. You win by getting four of the six major nations to commit to peace. Specifically, you get Berlin, St. Petersburg, and Vienna to commit to peace along with either Paris, London, or Rome. If you don't manage this by the time the calendar track reaches the end, then you lose, and war breaks out. First, let's go over the board. It has a lot going on, so we'll break down bit by bit. The board itself is an abstract representation of Europe during the 1914 crisis. There are six major cities, Vienna, St. Petersburg, Berlin, London, Paris, and Rome. There are five minor cities, known as Belgrade, Athens, Constantinople, Sofia, and Bucharest. And then there are three transition cities. They're purely there for where you would be moving if you were to go from one of these nations to another. And these three are Kiev, Warsaw, and the North Sea. Each major city has six slots on it, one of which is invisible. There are two red slots representing for tension. So here you go on Berlin. Two black spots representing diplomatic pressure. There's one gray spot, which represents secret conversations. And then the quote-unquote invisible spot, which is where you would place your character, is all the way to the right. Minor cities have red tension cubes placed on them. There's no set spots on there, so you would just place them within them to represent that they are gaining the tension. On the top of the board is a timeline. The timeline goes from when the assassination originally occurred to when the war would boil over if peace is not made. Underneath specific dates, from Monday the 13th to Friday the 31st, represent the days where the French delegation is sent from Paris to St. Petersburg and then back. On the days they are in Paris, St. Petersburg, and then Paris again, certain penalties will occur while they're there and for the duration of their stay. To the top left, under the timeline, there's a stock exchange. It will go up and down based on the tension cards drawn. It only has two effects on the game either raising London's war tension by one, as represented by the red spot at the very bottom two, or adding a, contact, a free contact on London, represented by the blank white spaces. If it reaches the very bottom of the list, meaning it hits the second tension piece, then the stock exchange will close and will no longer be active. At the bottom middle of the board are where players will put various dice when they're not at use. The dice that go here are the secret conversation dice, which are gray, red tension dice, and white diplomatic dice. Again, this is where you store them when they're not being used or have been placed on the board yet. To the middle right next to Constantinople is a small square called tension cubes. This is where you will place the red cubes that you use for tension on the minor cities. To the bottom left, there is the Government Response Weekday card pile, which has a red back to the cards. Next to it are the Government Response Weekend or Secret Conversation deck, these two respectively. They have a draw pile and the discard pile. All the way to the right side, bottom right of the board, is the Trigger Event discard pile or the Trigger Event deck, which have a yellow backing and the Action card and the Action card discard pile. And to the top, there is the Diplomatic Pouch deck which has three places where you place what are currently in-shop items or in-shop cards and to the very very right is the diplomatic discard pile and over to the left is where you will place the cards 
in between all of that are the contact pieces or the white cubes and we'll go for more of those more in the game This section will be going over setting up the game. You will start out by shuffling and then distributing the diplomacy character cards to each player. For this case, we will be using the single player version of the game, which means one person gets two diplomats. In our case, we have these two diplomats over here, Sir Edward Gray and Sergei Dimitri. Each diplomat has special abilities and I'll be going over mine right now. So for Sergei, he has the ability for one build action, he can build three contacts. This means that when he is on his home city, and he activates what is called a build context action. He will get three of these little white cubes instead of just getting one. So if he was in Vienna, which is not his home city, for example, he would only get one contact when using this action. His second ability is that he may remove all Belgrade tension if in Vienna or St. Petersburg as one action. So if he is in Vienna or St. Petersburg, then he can remove the Belgrade tension. So if there was three tension here, he can remove all of it as long as he's there as one of his actions. And lastly, Russian code breaking. He may look at the top two weekday government response cards and rearrange them if he desires. This is one action. So he could take the first two cards off of this deck, look at them, and then put them back however or whatever order he wants. Next up is Sir Edward Gray. Sir Edward Gray has the same first ability where if he's in his home city, he can build three contacts for the cost of one action. The second ability is he may always play an in-person action card like it's telegram card. This means that for in-person cards like this one, he can play them remotely. So from here, he can play them in Vienna. So he does not have to be present. And his last ability is he may spend two contacts as an action to increase the stock exchange by one. So if the stock exchange goes down very far, for example, he may spend two contacts, these guys right here, to increase this by one. The next thing you'll notice is that each diplomat has a number from one to five. This number represents a turn order in the game. The character with the lowest number goes first and the person with the highest number goes second. In this case, Dimitri has a two while Edward has five. So I would be taking Sergei's turn on the first day and then on the next day, it would be Sir Edward's turn and then that cycle would repeat. So next what we're gonna go over is the difficulty setting for the game. There are three difficulty settings in the game in total. There are easy, medium, and hard each with different changes and rules to the game to some extent. For the sake of demonstration purposes, we will be going over the easy version of the game. In the easy version of the game, the very first change you get is called Starting Entourage. These are the entourage pieces slash contact pieces. The differentiation between when they are contacts or entourage are based on if they're on a major city. If they're on a major city, they are considered contacts. When they are in your inventory, they are entourage. When you're on easy difficulty, players start out with a total of 12 entourage on medium they start with a total of eight and on hard they start with a total of zero additionally the second change on easy difficulty is in regard to the blank cards there are two blank cards in what is the trigger deck the trigger events deck will be shuffled at the beginning of the game and based on your difficulty will decide how many of these two blank cards are in there for easy difficulty both blank cards are in the deck on medium difficulty only one blank card is in the deck and on hard difficulty no blank cards are in the deck these blank cards have no special abilities, it's merely when you draw them, nothing happens for that end of the day cycle. So we're going to go over the start of the game. First thing you want to do is take three cards out from the Diplomatic Pouch deck and put them into what is the Diplomatic Pouch shop. These three cards can be purchased using the Entourage in your inventory. Um, and they all have different costs and abilities. We'll go over the three we have currently and I'll go over any more we draw or use as the game goes on. Starting off, we have the minus, we have Congress. This has minus one tension in Berlin. Uh, the, it affects specifically Berlin and it costs seven. Uh, at the middle, you'll see it's a little bit of flavor test. It explains what exactly is happening to get this effect. And at the very bottom left of the, of the card, you'll see a little number. That number represents where on the instruction manual it would be so you could look it up. Next up, we have uh, the Triple Inte Conference. This gives plus one secret conversation in Paris, St. Petersburg, and London. It costs four, and it's number 41. 
And last thing is Sleepless Night. It gives three action points to any diplomat. The usual action limitations apply as per a normal player turn. It costs four and it's number 13. What this card means specifically is that you just get three more actions. So if you spent all your actions on movement, for example, or you played two car you played a card and then did two other things, but you have something else you want to do, you don't have two more actions to do something. This does not mean you can repeat actions that are specifically not able to be repeated. And one example of this is you can't play, for example, two of these cards. You can't play two of these diplomatic cards at any point in the game, unless there is a special pouch card that allows you to break that rule. There are also three different types of cards. You can there's ongoing effects there, and there are immediate casts. So, and the third one is conditionals. So the way they work is their ongoing effects are once you buy the card, it stays in action always. Some of these are prevent some of these cards prevent tension from being in certain areas. The other one are immediate effects or quote unquote counter cards, which means that when a certain specific instance happens, for example, you pull something from the trigger deck, this card can then automatically be used to stop that or negate the effects of it. And the last thing is just play anytime cards, which are the normal cards, which are what all three of these are. None of them have special conditions. You can just use them whenever they are able to be used. So starting off, you're going to begin the game by placing one tension marker in Belgrade, one red tension die in Vienna, one gray secret conversation in Vienna, and an action penalty marker. The action penalty marker means is that whenever you play one of these action cards, you take, it costs two actions instead of one action. So you would have, if you're three actions, you only have one action left. In the first turn of the game, it's a little bit unique in the fact you do not actually draw a trigger deck card at the end of the turn. So uh, starting off, you're going to draw one government response deck at the beginning of the day. We got drafting an ultimatum. This results in at the bottom of it, you can see where it says tension. This decides what the tension, what kind of tension and where it's distributed. So Vienna, Berlin, St. Petersburg, Belgrade, Sofia, Constantinople, and Bucharest all get tension. That was a brutal one. Uh, so Sofia, let's see, Constantinople, Bucharest, Belgrade. Next up would be Vienna, Berlin, St. Petersburg. All right, so I'm going to put Berlin. So we have a secret conversation dice, and the way that works is that if there's tension, and it's not something called a hard line, or the card doesn't specifically say it goes through a secret conversation die, or removes a secret conversation die, then the secret conversation die actually takes the tension instead. This is good because secret conversation die can be removed and put back, so they can be reset, and the tension doesn't get you closer and closer to losing. However, if a secret conversation goes to six tension, it will then explode, and whatever the tension there is will be converted and given into tension here. For example, if this hits six, then it will be two tension will be dropped on Vienna. And lastly, at the bottom right, you will see that there's a little dash that says if it affects the stock market. So here it's neutral, so nothing happens to the to the London stock market. And then there's home rule. So the way this is the secondary effect, all the cards have some sort of, usually have some sort of effect or they say that they do not. In this case, it's the home rule. Context lost at Berlin, Vienna, and St. Petersburg. So if we had, for example, a context here or in St. Petersburg, all of them would be removed and sent to the bank. Fortunately, we do not. So this secondary effect has no point for us. So now we would take our turn. The first person to take their turn is Sergei because he has a lower number. Off the bat, I'm going to build three contacts. I already put the three in here. Uh, and then we would play, so that's one of our actions. Now we would play one of our cards. So there are three types of cards you can get, a telegram, in person, and informants. Informants are cards that generate a free contact for you in any city. And they have a secondary effect of letting you see what you should next expect from the government response deck, or this guy right here. They can be used, they can also be combined with the secondary effect, but I'll go over that in a second. Next up is the in-person cards. So the in-person cards uh, will give, whether they give contacts or what is called a white piece die, they will be, you have to, your diploma has to be there in order to use it. And if it has a specific area, like in this case it says in-person Vienna, one of my diplomats would have to be in Vienna in order to use this card. Otherwise, I can only use it for its secondary effects, which are to remove three cubes from a minor city if present. So if I was in, for example, Belgrade, and I wanted to remove the three tension there, I could use that. Now in this case, this guy ha I, Sergei has the ability to remove Belgrade, so I wouldn't want to do that, but the point still remains. If I want to remove it from Athens or Sofia, somewhere I didn't, my character would have to be there, and then I could use this card to remove that tension. 
And then lastly is Telegram. So the Telegram card, and in this case you can also see it doesn't have a specified area. Telegrams can either be, similarly, contacts or piece die, and they can be used anywhere on the map. In this case, this one doesn't have a specified area, so I could use it for anywhere from Vienna to London to Berlin or Paris. I can use it on any of the major cities, and I don't have to have my character be present there. Additionally, it's secondary option, which is remove three red cubes from any minor city. I can do that remotely since it is telegramming the information to them to remove that tension. Now, lastly, the effect that all cards, all of these action cards have, you'll see at the bottom, it says combine any two cards into one person anywhere. So the way it works is you can change, you can combine, for example, Vienna, this is in-person Vienna card and this informants card to become worth one peace point in any city. However, your character or the diplomat must be in that city to use it. So it doesn't mean you can use it at any distance anywhere because um, it becomes an in-person card. So off the bat for my first turn with Sergey, I am going to use the informants card. I'm going to put this in the discard deck. So I get one contact. I'm going to put it right here on Vienna. And actually, no, I'm going to place this in. Yeah, I'm going to place it on Vienna. Uh, and then I can look at the top three government response cards. So I can go one, two, and three. I can look at these three. I can rearrange them however I want. So as you can, so off the bat, you can see here, there's a hardliner. The way this hardliner functions is that it goes through, unless you have a specified card, which there is in the diplomatic pouch deck, that cancels out the either the effects of hardliners or the a specific hardline card slash government response card when you draw it. Um, this hardline card goes through uh, the secret conversation and specifically targets the city who that is closest to winning. So if you have a city with five peace points and one tension or five peace points and four attention it will target that city if nowhere else is at a higher chance of being pacified than it additionally uh, all the pouch cards here so one two three will all be removed and thrown to the discard pile and then a new set of three will be pulled and lastly it has a similar effects at the bottom so if bucharest sofia and athens are all higher tension than belgrade plus one tension in belgrade um that effect obviously wouldn't occur if we drew it at this point and lastly the effect on the stock market this in this case it has none uh, so I'm going to go, I'm just going to roll these around. Hope I don't get the the, the other one first. Um, oh yeah, that will, you also draw a new action card after using an action card. Leave it face down until your next turn or draw it on your next turn. I usually do this. Um, these are the extra amount of cards. Next thing I'm going to do on my turn, I've used one action. I'm going to use a second action to place a contact in here. And then, let me see, I built a contact. I played a card and I did that. All right, so that's the end of my turn. I can choose to buy something from here if I want to. And in this case, yeah, I'm going to buy this card. So I'm going to spend one, two, three, four. Send that to the bank. Draw a new card, place that here. And then I'm going to play this card immediately. I'm going to put a secret conversation in Paris, St. Petersburg, and London. And boom. All right. So normally at the end of your turn, you would draw a trigger deck event, but this is the first day and you don't do that on the first day. So you're going to take the next turn. Now it is Sir Edward's turn. So I'm going to draw another government response deck card. Uh, the tension is placed in Vienna, Berlin, and Paris. Uh, so I would be placing the tension in Vienna. It has a zero conversation. Berlin does not, so it catches one. And Paris, Paris has a zero conversation. Lastly, the, there's no effect on the stock market. And at the end, the Calix trial. Uh, context lost in Berlin, Vienna, and Rome. Damn. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> um, but yeah. And then I would flip over this action card I have. And I got another telegram uh, and Berlin. So this is what I was talking about, where they can either be contact points or they could be uh, peace points. And they could be specified or they could be vague. So I can cast this anywhere and I don't have to be in that place. Uh, so it is our friend here's turn. So what am I going to do now? Uh, I'm going to use this telegram. 
So I'm going to use this telegram to put one peace point into Berlin. So whenever you put down a peace point, as an additional thing, you can't like, remove secret conversations. So in this case, let's say I use the peace point to put peace into St. Petersburg. So this secret conversation is gone now. So I would have to place, I would have to spend a separate action. Secret conversations, you can put down secret conversations anywhere from anywhere. There's, it only costs one action to do so, however. Uh, additionally, you can remove a secret conversation without having to put down a peace point. So if I wanted to, I could remove Vienna secret conversation, but I would have to spend another action to put it back. Um, in this case, I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm going to place the peace point here. I'll, I'm actually not going to place the peace point here. I'm going to place it in Berlin so it's less messed up. Um, I have that place right here. And then where is abilities? Yeah. So the plus side with this guy's ability is I could play this in-person card anywhere. Um, so if I wanted to on my next turn, I could play this Vienna card somewhere else if I really feel so driven. Uh, for my next turn, I'm going to put this here. And then I should have one more action, so I'm going to build three more. And I will end my turn. So why am I placing these contacts here on this city? So when you build four contacts onto a city, you can convert them th into one peace point. However, this is a separate action, and you can't put more than one contact down on the city as an action. Other cards, though, can place them down. For example, certain pouch cards will place a contact as we've seen here, action cards will place a contact in other situations such as certain uh, going down on the stock market like here will place a contact in London. So now that I've taken my turn with Sir Edward, I will draw a trigger deck card. I got Paris. The way this works is each one of these is a secret conversation. So this goes up by one. So if you draw something that increases secret conversations, the seat and there is already present a secret conversation acts the same as tension. The secret conversation just goes up by one or goes up by the specified amount. So we move on to the next day. And I'll flip the card. So the Straits, Tension, St. Petersburg, Vienna, Paris, London, and Constantinople. So let's do Constantinople, London, Paris, Vienna, and St. Petersburg. Managed to dodge a bullet with Rome. So now it's Sergei's turn again. Uh, for my turn, I'm Gonna play this telegram. No, actually, uh, I'm gonna play this telegram. Put two pieces in Berlin. Cool. Then I'm going to spend so movement. So these are certain actions everyone can take. So for movement, each move, each space you move costs one action point. So I'm going to move two spaces, and that is all the turn, as all the actions I have. So that's the end of Sergey's turn. So I'm going to draw another trigger deck card. I got a blank this time, so nothing happens. Thank goodness. So now I'm going to move on to the next day. Flip this over. Draw another card. There's the hardliner. So first things first. Let's get rid of these. As a separate point, understandably, hardliners get rid of everything in there. If you want to, once on every player's turn, you can also just refresh the deck. So you can take all of the cards in there trash them like the hardliner does and then set a new pair this is true for these are true these are all free actions um but yeah the hardliner so we run over what this did before but i'll go over it one more time move one red tension to the city the players are closest to winning so in this case the city we are closest to winning would be berlin since it has one point of tension to it so what do you do if the players are at equal distance to winning any city uh, let's say there was one tension at every city and no peace. You would go in numerical order. So similar to how the characters go first based on who is the lower number, the order of priority would be Vienna would get the first would be first up for tension. Then it goes St. Petersburg, then Berlin, then Paris, then Rome, and then lastly London. And that is how you decide that. That's hence the numbers at the top of each one. Um, in this case, I have a peace point, uh, so I would prioritize London in this. I would prioritize Berlin in this case. Uh, it as a note for prioritization contacts or or entourage don't play any role in deciding where the hardliner affects it is purely based on the peace points to tension um that's good right there so now it is my turn again and yep so it's started we're starting again so i am going to play hmm not a lot of great information here. 
create options here are non-existing. All right, I'm going to play this Vienna card. Put this Vienna card right here. Because the special ability allows me to play those cards. Uh, it doesn't act as a... Um, I don't have to spend an additional action to activate this ability. Some action, some abilities are passive abilities. So just doing something, for example, in this case, I always, with this, with Sardward, I always play in-person action cards like they are telegrams. Um, so one piece of play goes there. I'm going to place one of these here. And I'm going to remove the secret conversation on Vienna. And that is the end of my turn. Is there anything I want to buy? Um, Vienna and Valerian each have at least three diplomatic pressure, plus one diplomatic pressure. Any of these cities? Hmm. That's so. These are one of those. This that's not one of those conditional ones, but this a lot of these cards do have special conditions that require certain events to occur. Uh, plus one secret conversation between Vienna and Rome, and move. No action cost ignoring any logistical problems. So in some points in the game, moving from cities to cities will be penalized. And you will have to pay two actions. Or, for example, right here it says, or no, sorry, not on this card, but on some cards, it will say that you will can only move one space this turn. This ignores that kind of property, and I'm going to buy it for this reason. All right, and that's the end of my turn. So now I'm going to draw another. Ah, the Black Hand Arrests. So it gains plus one tension or secret conversation in Vienna or St. Petersburg, whichever is the closest to committing to peace, plus one tension in Belgrade. So that's really bad. Um, so Belgrade is now at three tension. So the way that... It's real quick that I mess something up. This is future Axios coming back and editing it in. Uh, the way the rule actually works is that when there is a three tension on a city, a minor city, the and you have another city in which there is tension already there will be no more tension spreading around uh vienna will gain attention for each city you can't place down additionally if you cannot place attention down and one of the government cards tells you to place down attention for example on athens perfect you gain attention in vienna this happens every time you cannot place down another tension piece either in a city or you do not have any more tension points to place in a empty city or a city that requires them. This is true if this was the case where Sofia has two, Bucharest has two, and Athens has two, but all three need to be placed one, you would add three tension. Additionally, this effect goes through secret conversations. This gain tension will cause Vienna unresolve, even if it is sued for peace. Now back to the main video. Um, so yeah on the turn so yeah st petersburg or vienna whichever is closer to coming to peace so unfortunately vienna is closer to coming to peace so it gains one this card can be blocked by secret conversations but unfortunately i didn't have one so it goes through um so now we go to the next day it is back to sergey's turn all right thank goodness um so london and paris both gain a tension this goes to five this goes to three the kaiser's belligerence uh conscience loss in paris London and St. Petersburg. Man, I am just not having a good streak right now. I'll tell you what. But yeah, no. So this is uh, there's a lot of cards that allow that help remove these kind of effects uh, and remove contacts. So you want to be smart about how you're placing them down. You also want to be wary. There are cards in the game. There's a contact card actually in this game that allow or diplomatic pouch card in this game that allows you to prevent this specific effect from happening and. It is an ongoing effect. If memory serves me correctly. Oh, so yeah, my new card is Telegram. I can place it anywhere. Thank goodness. Um, so I'm going to play this. So I'm going to play this card. I know I'm here with Sergey. And I'm going to go. Hmm. As a note, you don't have to play one of these cards every turn. So I'm not going to do that, actually. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to remove the Belgrade Tension because I don't want to take that. So I have one more action. I have a penalty here in Vienna, so I can't play this card. Uh, but I can place a secret conversation. Yeah. I can place one of these here. And I can look if there's anything I want to purchase. I'm going to buy this. One, two, three. Boom. I'll place that there. 
That's a very good one. Vienna or Belgrade, I must be. So specifically in this case, this requires me to be in one of those two cities in order to activate this card. So I have to be in either Vienna or Belgrade to use this card. Yep. Um, all right, and that is the end of my turn. Drawing on the trigger deck, so St. Petersburg. So St. Petersburg gains another secret conversation tension. I'm going to go up by one. Flip this, go here. So the tension is Berlin. Berlin. Uh, all secret conversation points in Vienna are removed. We have no secret conversation points, so nothing happens there. Uh, logistical problems, here's what I was talking about at the very bottom. You may only move one space this turn. So if I, for example, wanted to move uh, Sergei back to St. Petersburg or over to Paris or London, I would be unable to do so unless I possessed a card that does this, for example. Exor ignore any logistical problems. So this is, however... Edward's turn. So I'm going to put the one tension here on Berlin. I'm getting very much stomped out from that. Uh, I'm going to combine these two cards together. Use them to construct one peace point in London. Then I would draw two new cards. That's all I can do for that. That costs one action, by the way. That does not cost two separate actions to combine those. That is all a one action move. I will build more contacts. And then I will place one contact because I don't learn my lesson on London. Uh, so far, we've only been drawing neutral effects for the London Stock Exchange, so nothing has been happening. Uh, but normally, you know, it's rising and falling every now and again. Uh, that is the end of my turn here. So we'd be drawing a trigger deck card. Rome gains one tension, one green, one secret conversation. So now it is the weekend. So how does the weekend work? So the weekend works fairly similar to the normal. The only difference is that you're not drawing from the government response weekday set or the trigger deck at the end. You are only drawing from the secret conversations government response deck. So at the first day, so at the beginning of the day, I draw this and this places down only secret conversations. So you kind of want to plan out when you get to this point. Like right now I have a little bit too much secret conversations around, so I'm not going to gain as many buffs. And actually this could hurt me if I got Paris two times in a row, for example, and I didn't clear out Paris, it would explode and cause serious issues. Um, so yeah, I got Vienna, Berlin, and then Rome, go, oops. Rome goes up by one. Uh, then I take my turn as normal. So it's Sergey's turn. Uh, what do I want to do here? I'm going to play this telegram to St. Petersburg. Actually, no. Oop, that was a little lag. Telegram to Vienna. You don't have to play a telegram in another place. You can play it locally. That's the big benefit of being able to play it literally anywhere. Um, bring contact down here. And then do I want to play one of these? I'm going to leave that. I want those one, two. Oh, no, that was two because the penalty. So that's the end of my turn. Uh, so then we move on to the next day, Sunday. Flip this card. So we got St. Petersburg. Vienna, and Rome. And then Sir Edward's going to take his turn. Flip this card. Uh, I'm going to play this card. On to Vienna. Then I'm going to build more contacts. And place one down. Hmm. So that's one, that's two, that's three. All right. Um, and that's the end for the demonstration for this section. Uh, so what I'm going to be... So to discuss how the game works and how it will end, uh, you will be... So if at any point any city hits six in terms of... With a space of two, so if this was six to four on Vienna, then Vienna is considered resolved for war. And in this specific case, if Vienna, Berlin, Saint, or St. Petersburg resolve for war, the game automatically ends and you lose. 
Uh, the AI, however, if it's something like you must win with a, you must hit above, six or above with a two point difference. Additionally, what can happen and has happened to me many a times, especially towards the end of the game, is you'll be getting to the end and you'll have both sides are getting up to somewhere like 11 points or 10 points and you're going one by one. Whoever hits six first is considered the victor. And the place was resolved and all cards that affect that, for example, if I were to draw this card and Berlin was resolved for peace, this card would have no effect. The tension does not continue to rise after it's been resolved. Um, additionally, any points left on the city are there. Uh, and lastly, like I said before, secret conversations go away as you play them. Uh, so if these, any of these three are lost, but you still manage to capture either St. Petersburg, Vienna, or Berlin, you can still play the game. So let's say Rome gets up to six, and that's fine. However, if a city gets, if one, if one of these three cities becomes resolved for war, it will be seen as a defensive war action. So war won't immediately be declared, but tension, one tension will rise in every other city that's unresolved. So if, for example, I was at this crucial moment and I had six here, I would lose the game right there. Um, well, this would be gone, but yeah, I would lose the game right there. Um, for any other effects, there are cards that remove tension or lower tension. Uh, you, like I said, you want to beat the enemy six by, you want to beat the other one by two, and you must have a two difference when you hit six or above. Otherwise, it does not end, and then you would just go to whoever hits 12 first. Uh, and last but not least, we will go over quickly what the effects here are. So, skipping over to Paris Monday. So when this is in effect, and I'm in, let's say, Paris, and trying to resolve Paris. During this time period, an action penalty ability would be placed in Paris. And as three days would pass, once, that once the diet leaves Paris, so this piece would move here, this point would be removed, and everything would operate as normal. Let's say Sergei was up here, and once the diet passes through and makes their way from Paris to St. Petersburg, then the action penalty will be placed onto St. Petersburg. And this action penalty is the same as what's on Vienna, meaning these cards cost two in order to in order to use on wherever or while you're there. Otherwise, that was how to play Crisis 1914. I thank you all for showing up, and I hope you enjoy the game. This is Axios 729, signing off.